rotate my thing. What do you mean? Oh, there it went. Is it on? Does it look on to you? It's on. Hopefully. It says live. There we are. <laughs> Hit some tabernacle. Here we are. Um, we are um, in Sunday school. So welcome to Sunday school in uh, virtual land. Um, we wish you were here with us. And as soon as you get a chance, we hope that you drop on by. We are studying um, birds of the Bible. And, of course, it's got the name on it. <laughs> no. Um, the Lord um, has had me uh, writing um, scriptural books or Bible study books for a number of, of years. And um, it's just an honor to share the word with others. It's just truly an honor that um, he gives me to be with you guys and we enjoy visitors we enjoy being together and just studying and learning so we are on chapter seven i think it was let me turn back a few pages to find out yes seven ostriches so we know that um ostriches forget about their eggs sometimes so there's a lack of wisdom there sometimes. And we talked about um, why do they travel in groups? So if you went on an African safari, you would be, um, the ostrich would see you before you would see it. They run in packs of 20 to 25. Yes, they can go to speeds of 60 or 70. Remember when we were four-wheeling yesterday, Hayden? And um, it would go faster or as fast as your four-wheeler. And so we talked about why do we come to church? That's where we left off last week. Why do we come to church? Why do we get with other believers? Why do we flock together like the ostrich? Well, we talked about we come to pray in church, don't we? We come to church and we come to pray. And so James 5, 14 through 16 says for us to pray. Won't you look that up for us? Julie, won't you get um, John... 1335. Hayden, you got your uh, scripture with you? Why don't you get um, the Bible out from below the table there? You can go Hebrews 412. And these will tell us some reasons why we do come to church and why we ought to get together and why we ought to study the word together um, in some means and some in some way. And so um it's good that we come together to pray. What's those scriptures? What James 5, 14. One that we're, we're just going to mention that if, the, if we can look it up later, it's going to be Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter 15. Both of those chapters deal with the church coming together, the early church coming together in order to make important decisions. Where do we go now for counseling if we have an important decision? We need to go to God. But... We need to go to God first. Yes, that's right. Very good answer. But we also go to whom for wisdom? Our parents? Christian. Other Christian. Christians. Yeah, and your grandparents. Um, those are all great sources of, um, of help to make decisions. But in the old times, even when I was a child, a lot of people went to... Um, they're preachers, like Pastor, like uh, Papa Warren. He would go to his preacher if he needed to know where to go rent a house or um, just advice on something. But I remember him specifically saying to rent a house. Yeah, he, Christian leaders. Yeah, just Christian leaders. That's where we need to go to help get counsel. All right, read it for us, nice and loud. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and appoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. That's right. That's a section in the Bible for healing. And it, you go to God in prayer for healing. So you come to church expecting to be healed physically, mentally, <coughs> or um, something wrong with you. Um, how do you get uh, uh, spiritually healed? Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, through the burial, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, believing in him and to be saved. That's spiritual healing in a nutshell. All right. John 13, 35. What does that tell us? Why else do we flock together like ostriches? 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's right, to show love for one another and taking care of one another. When you're in a herd, when ostriches are in a herd and something, someone sees something coming, they're going to run. And so when you see church, church sees something coming down the pipe. We need to stand together. We need to stand up for things that we that are against scripture, like abortion, for example. That's just totally against scripture. Um, we talked about that a little bit last week. Hayden, you got Hebrews 4.12? Hayden's looking up 4.12 for us. Tells us about something about the Holy Spirit. For the world of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any uh, toadage toadage sword uh, piercing it even to the dividing around the soul and spirit and the joints in there in marrow and and is a descent a decenter of the thoughts and in intends of the heart all right well hebrews 10 24 25 tells us that we come together to stir up the spirit the spirit the spirit pours out and we have corporate worship but Hayden read the scripture in Hebrews 4.12, and it's talking about hearing the word. Where else are you going to hear the word if you can't come to church? Sometimes you can get it at Facebook. Sometimes you can get it at YouTube. Sometimes you can get a podcast. There's all kinds of things out there that if you can't make it to church, that'll help you learn and study the word. It's, it's sad that um, she doesn't attend to her young. Can you remember a time... Um, that you've seen something in society where um, a human characteristic is like that, where the woman didn't take care of her young, or the father didn't take care of the young. What happens to those children? Could you say they were neglected? What happens when children are neglected in society? It's a sad situation. And so, we come together not to neglect one another's needs, to help each other. Um, children that are neglected, that, though, they have low self-esteem. And sometimes they run away, and then you have all kinds of other issues. And um, sometimes you even have malnutrition if somebody's neglecting feeding them. So our church is very good. The Lord has given us... Um, wonderful supporters that help us feed the homeless, that help donate stuff so that we could get them fed. Um, this is all um, what Jesus wants us to do in servitude. He wants us to look around in the environment and compare and meditate on his word, what we're seeing. Sometimes people tell me, um, you have wonderfully behaved children. And so what do I say to them? It's the Jesus in us. It's the Jesus in them. Do you think that's a true statement? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, it's a true statement. Because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, what happens? Do you make poor choices or good choices? He guides you to make the right choices. He guides you the right to make the right choices. And if you are obedient, it'll keep you from getting in trouble. And so... We follow the golden rules, you know, the Ten Commandments. All of this is scriptural. And if you are um, in obedience to what God gives you to do, then you're fulfilling and you're calling. And when that happens, man, you're so happy. You're so happy. And that's why I get so happy and I'm so encouraged when God gives me something to teach somebody else. Uh, that's just um, what makes my ticker tick, if you will. According to Job 39, 17, God Almighty proclaims that he did not withhold understanding from the ostrich. The ost that he did withhold, sorry. And the ostrich has what they call short-term memory loss. Now, some people have short-term memory loss like me with my strokes, and that's a medical condition. It's gotten way better over the year with fasting and prayer and, and um reading and studying and doing God's work. But some people just are so busy nowadays. Just so We're just so busy that we forget the little things. We're absent-minded instead of short-term memory. But there is no secret that because of God, we are survivors. 
that I'm a survivor. I used to be um, totally dependent on notes. I'd go out in public and um, I'd forget what I was going to go do. So I would have notes, A, B, C, D, or one, two, three of what I needed to get done. And then sometimes I'd go out in public and get lost. And then I would finally remember to call somebody. Hey, I'm here. Do you remember where I was going? I mean, it was, uh, memory was really bad. Um, yeah, so what, I may forget what my kid likes to, is their f favorite food to eat. But we always had meals. Um, but we can recognize these things. And with God's help, we can grow stronger. And he is our source of, of help. And he is our source and our guide that leads us. What's your favorite way to praise God? How do you think the ostrich praises God? I'm sure they can shriek. Remember we studied about how they can shriek and how they can talk and sing and talk to one another and just doing what God tells them to do. That's praising the Lord. Our conversation. I think Julie's way of, um, and Hayden's and this whole group, Singing, Psalms 147.1, Julie. Can you praise him in prayer? Sure. That's in Psalms 2. You can praise him with your breath, with giving your testimony. I like dance and with instruments. Can you look that one up for me, Seth? Psalms 149.3. Oh, Psalms 147.1. Go ahead. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Very good. Do you have yours, Seth? They don't want to be on camera, by the way. <clears throat> I could make us dizzy. Let's see. There's Hayden. <laughs> Hi, Seth. And oh, my face is so close. There's yeah. Juliana. <laughs> okay, so there's all three of them. We have a visitor, and I won't put him on the spot, but I can the, oh, my own three here. <laughs> Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with Tim. Tim, oh, symbols and, and instruments. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, I have a challenge for you. <clears throat> I didn't bring any jars today, but I'm sure you have a jar at home. And what I want you to do this week, just for one week, I want you to get you some pebbles or some rocks or some marbles, something that you like. And every time a praise comes across your thoughts, I want you to drop that pebble, and I want you to get me a picture of it, of how um, many times the Lord has blessed you. And so, that way, when you build this pile, you'll understand that God's in control, and that it's a reminder how, of how good God is. Just like the ostrich that buries her eggs, she can have 25 eggs at a time, and covers them, and protects them. I think it's a good activity of building an altar with rocks. Now, we're not going to worship this altar and get crazy with it. It's just to serve a purpose of, Lord, how good are you? How good you are to me. It'll spark a fleshly reaction of love. What do you think? In or, or out? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. In or out? Come on, we're in. We're going to do this this week. <laughs> And I expect a picture next week. I've never, um, I've never seen the ostriches have a stampede, but they're supposed to have stampedes just like horses and cattle, and feathers flying everywhere. Do you remember how much they sold those feathers for? Eight dollars a pound. And I went home and I looked it up, and they make fans out of them. To fan their face. That's what I need. <laughs> yes. So they run. When we're scared, do we run physically? If I'm distraught, I want to run. 
I'll definitely play. Yeah. When my when my brother passed away, I just wanted to run. And um, just run and run until I could no longer run anymore. So, running, we should run to an altar. We should run to prayer yes. to talk to God. Run to him. Don't hide your face in the sand like the ostrich. Run to the Lord for help. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah he predicted the fall of a great nation. It was the, it was the nation of Babylon. It was one of the wealthiest nations built on the backs of slaves and some of God's people. The image of the ostrich in the Bible represents a desolate land. So what is a desolate land? When I think of a desolate land, I think of a desert, right? No life, laid to ruins. Ashes to ashes, dust to, uh, dust, to dust, we'd return to the earth. No one's there. Birds come in to see what they could find to eat. No plants. And anything that grows probably has thorns. A thorny, desolate land that nobody wants to go to. But can I tell you that God reconciles. He reconciles. When, when he, he loves you, he's never mad. And when you do something bad, confess it. God loves you. Jeremiah 50, 39. He, God restored the nation. Job 12, 14. Job rebuked rebukes his friends. You remember when his friends came to taunt him when he um, didn't have anything? But what did God do for Job at the end? Because he stayed so close to God and never, never went back on him. He blessed him. He blessed him. He restored. And he restored more than what he had before. His daughters was even recorded as being prettier than the other ones. I don't know. I don't know. Isaiah 13, 6. God is able to um, destroy and rebuild. I don't know if that's Sodom and Gomorrah in Isaiah. No, it's not. It's uh, Genesis 8, I think. Um, after, um, no, that might, I think it is. I'm going to have to relook that one up. Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed and made it a desolate land. But in Genesis 8, that's Noah. How many of you have been in a flood? Everybody has been in a flood in this class. Have you been in a flood? My mom has. Yeah. Man, the devastation after, after that water recedes. Is there anything clean and pretty on it? No. Can you imagine when Noah parked that boat and got out and it started to dry, the land started to dry up and how just murky and mud, no life in it? That's how God restores our soul. Isn't that wonderful? God restores our soul with beauty and delight and joy and peace and temperance and good and will and self-control. I love that picture. Genesis 19, Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, was grieved at the sin that was around him. I'm grieved at the sin that I see in America today. We should grieve when a baby is killed. We should grieve when murders and atrocities come. We should be shocked. Our shock factor shouldn't be gone ever. Sin is abound, but... The Bible tells us in um, Micah, I don't have it written down here in my notes, Micah, God said, if my people will return, repent, he will restore land. He will restore this great nation to what it once was. And even more so, like he did for Job. 
Thank you for um, tuning in just for our few 15, 20 minute lesson that we have in Sunday school every Sunday. Um, we have um, some other activities, but this is just the Bible study part. We're going to um, sing and um, we have a little, we're blessed with a little teen band that God gave us. So we're going to practice some singing here in a little bit and do some other things. But tune in with us next Sunday. We'll be studying maybe a little bit more about the ostrich, maybe in a little something else that the Lord gives us. Bye.